Hello. Welcome to the first episode of Life of a Scientist. My name is Eleni and I'm a student employee at the Ward Beecher Planetarium. I'm super excited to be hosting our first episode of Life of a Scientist, which will be a series of short videos that talk about the lives of people who have made important contributions to science. Each episode will feature a different scientist, and today's episode will feature Vera Rubin. Vera Rubin was an astronomer who made some very important contributions in galactic astronomy. But let's start from the beginning. Vera Rubin, or Vera Cooper in her earlier years, was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on July 23rd, 1928. Her parents were Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe, and she was the younger of two sisters. Her mother and father worked at Bell Telephone, and her sister eventually became an attorney. Her family moved to Washington, D.C. when she was 10 years old. She said that she developed an interest in astronomy at a very young age as she admired the stars from her bedroom window. Even then, I was more interested in the question than the answer, she remembered. I decided at an early age that we inhabit a very curious world. At 14, with the help of her father, who was an electrical engineer, she built a crude telescope out of cardboard and began to track meteors. In high school, she found as many opportunities to study and write about astronomy as possible, and her parents supported her. But upon hearing that she received a scholarship to go to college, her physics teacher urged her to stay away from science. She didn't, obviously, but this foreshadowed the many challenges that she would face in her academic career. Rubin graduated from high school in 1944 and then studied at Vassar College, which was at the time an all-women's school. She was inspired by Maria Mitchell, the first American to discover a comet, who was a professor there. She got married in her last year of undergrad and graduated as the only student in her class with a bachelor's in astronomy. Rubin wanted to study at Princeton to get a PhD, but the astrophysics graduate program did not admit women and declined to send her a course catalog. Princeton would not accept female graduate students in astrophysics for 27 more years. Rubin also turned down an offer to study at Harvard University and instead obtained a master's degree at Cornell University where her husband was working on his PhD in physical chemistry. Her work at Cornell inspired a lot of future research, both for her and other scientists. She was fascinated with how galaxies move and began gathering data for dozens of galaxies. When she presented her thesis, her advisor mocked her work, but he suggested that her research should be presented at the American Astronomical Society meeting, which was and still is one of the largest meetings in astrophysics. Her advisor went on to say that he could present her work for her in his name because she was pregnant and just one month before the meeting she was due. She said, oh, I can go, and she did. She drove for several hours through a snowstorm with her one month old child to attend the meeting. She didn't know anyone at the meeting and felt as though she didn't fit in. She was suffering from imposter syndrome, which was the feeling that she didn't deserve her accomplishments or her status. She often asked herself, will I ever be a real astronomer? Her presentation inspired a lot of discussion, but many of the comments that she received were negative. She never published her results. After completing her master's, Rubin stayed at home with her child for six months, and while she loved being a mother, she found it very hard to stay home. Her husband encouraged her to go back to school. She began her doctoral studies at Georgetown University when she was 23 and pregnant with her second child. She continued to encounter sexism during her time at Georgetown University and was even denied access to her advisor's office for being a woman. She continued to study the motion of galaxies and her dissertation concluded that galaxies in the universe tend to clump together rather than being uniformly distributed. Many astronomers were observing and researching this at the time, but Rubin made great contributions to the research, and this would eventually lead to her making one of the greatest discoveries in astronomy. After she completed graduate school, Rubin worked as a professor at Georgetown University for several years and eventually worked at the Carnegie Institute of Washington. 
she used their observatory to study the rotations of galaxies and also applied to use the Palomar Observatory. She was the first woman to observe there, and upon arrival, she realized that they did not have a women's restroom. So she went to her room, cut a piece of paper into the shape of a skirt, and taped it over the person on the door to the men's restroom. It was at this point in her career that Rubin would make her most impressive contributions to astronomy. As I mentioned, Rubin was very interested in the rotation of galaxies. Some astrophysicists who studied galaxies would observe how quickly the stars and dust throughout the galaxy were moving. Astrophysicists already had an idea of how things should work. The objects near the center of the galaxy should orbit faster, while the objects on the outskirts should have a much slower velocity. We know this because of our prior knowledge of physics. For example, we see the same thing in our solar system and in other planetary systems, where the planets closest to the sun orbit very quickly relative to the objects that are far away. Astrophysicists had also used Newton's laws, Kepler's laws, and other laws of physics to model how galaxies should move, which further cemented the expectations that objects near the center of the galaxy will move faster than objects near the edges. But this isn't what astronomers observed. Throughout the 1900s, astronomers would study specific galaxies and note that they were not behaving as expected. The objects on the outside were moving just as fast as the objects on the inside. For this to be possible, there would have to be a lot of matter surrounding galaxies that we can't see or detect. We call this dark matter because it doesn't give off any sort of light that we can see. The name is appropriately mysterious. Astronomers have yet to detect actual dark matter to this day. But what does this have to do with Vera Rubin? Vera Rubin is the reason why we know for sure that dark matter is there, even if we can't see it. She did extensive work to show that all galaxies behave like this, and that dark matter is by far the most credible explanation. She has won several awards for her work, including the National Medal of Science from President Bill Clinton, and received several honorary doctorates from major universities across the United States. Many argue that she should have received a Nobel Prize for her contributions. Rubin continued to advocate for women in science throughout her career. For example, when going to conferences, she would look at the list of speakers, and if there were very few or no women on the list, she would contact the organizers and tell them that they have a problem and they need to fix it. She also dismantled several men-only policies at various institutions. She even advised the Pope to have more women on his committee. Many women are inspired by her as her two main goals were to have a family and to be a successful astrophysicist. She was definitely successful as she raised four children during her academic career who all earned PhDs and she made substantial discoveries in astrophysics. Rubin passed away in 2016 at the age of 88. In 2019, it was announced that an observatory will be built in Chile to honor her, called the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, which will focus on the study of dark matter. Vera Rubin's contributions will continue to inspire future research and help with our understanding of the universe and dark matter. I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes by Rubin. There is no problem that can be solved by a man that cannot be solved by a woman. <laughs>